King Farouk of Egypt ruled from 1936 until he was overthrown during the Egyptian Revolution in 1952. Some of his craziest antics included owning over a hundred red cars and making it illegal in Egypt for citizens to own red cars so he could drive around Egypt like a madman and the police would know not to pull him over. He would also often shoot the tires of any car that overtook him and ambulances would follow his car around to pick up the people he injured. King Farouk once had a dream that he was attacked by a lion so when he awoke he went to the Cairo Zoo and shot a lion with a rifle as revenge. He was famous for being a kleptomaniac and hired professional thieves to teach him how to pickpocket and then he would pickpocket various politicians and diplomats were meeting them. It is said that he stole Winston Churchill's pocket watch when they met. He had a grotesquely huge appetite and he was rumoured to drink 20 to 30 sodas a day and would start his days off with a breakfast of caviar followed by 10 to 30 eggs on toast followed by lobster, steak, lamb and chicken. It is possible that he died of a heart attack. However, some believe he was poisoned by Egyptian intelligence. Why did this princess believe she swallowed a glass piano that would shatter inside of her? Princess Alexandria of Bavaria was known for her beauty and intelligence and wrote several books that were published to acclaim. However, from an early age, she showed signs of mental health problems. She had a severe problem regarding extreme cleanliness, which would trigger hysterical fits, and she would only wear white clothes as a sign of purity. Her father, Ludwig I of Bavaria, refused various potential husbands for Alexandra and had numerous affairs that caused the princess a great deal of stress. One affair in particular with an Irish dancer named Lolo Montes caused a huge scandal at the time. Shortly after the affair was made public, Alexandra was found tiptoeing sideways around the palace corridors, and when asked why she was walking in such a manner, she said she believed she had swallowed a glass piano as a child and was terrified it would shatter inside of her if she knocked into something. It is now believed that the stress of her father's antics were a possible cause for Alexandra's delusions. Peter III of Russia was the grandson of Peter the Great and husband to Catherine the Great, but despite his relation to two of the greatest Russian leaders in the country's history, he was actually brought up in Germany and hated Russia and couldn't even be bothered to learn Russian even after being appointed as the Tsar. He was an alcoholic man-child who would rather play with toy soldiers at night than spending time alone with his wife. In fact, it is believed that their marriage was never consummated. He had a fondness for cruelty and humiliated his wife in public and played practical jokes on his friends that would usually lead to them being in physical pain. He once made a group of men fire guns at Catherine's private residence for his own pleasure. Some of his crazy his antics included making his servants and his wife dress up as soldiers and perform military drills, as well as capturing a rat that had nibbled at one of his toy soldiers and then trying that rat for treason in a court before hanging the rat for its crimes in a tiny gallow that he had his servants construct for him. After only six months, he was overthrown by Catherine and exiled from society before dying in mysterious circumstances. Various historians believe that Catherine and her lover may have had a hand in his demise. This queen believed she was possessed by the devil. Queen Maria I of Portugal, or Maria the Mad, who was born into a long line of inbreeding, became the first queen regent in Portuguese history in 1777. In 1755, a huge earthquake which caused a tsunami almost completely destroyed her home city of Lisbon and demolished the palace that she was born in. This traumatic event had a deep effect on Maria's mental state, and she would show signs of melancholy, nervous agitation, and bouts of delirium throughout her younger life. However, it was in her later life, after she lost her husband, who was also her uncle in 1786 that her mental state began to deteriorate. Two years after she lost her husband, in the space of three months, her eldest son, her only daughter, her grandson, and her confessor priest all passed away, and she descended into inconsolable grief and would wail and scream for hours on end. Maria began to believe that she was damned to go to hell and that the devil had possessed her, and she would violently attack and punch her servants. Various treatments were prescribed to help her mental state, including ice baths, blistering, and being administered laxatives. Unsurprisingly, these treatments only only made Maria's mental state worse and she eventually had to abandon her royal duties. Eric the 14th of Sweden was regarded as intelligent, artistic and capable as a prince. However, once king, he gradually became more and more paranoid and began acting in extremely irrational ways, seemingly believing that his kingdom was plotting against him. He executed people for laughing, whispering and smiling, as well as executing guards who irritated him, or who were deemed too handsome or well-dressed, as he believed they would try to seduce the women of his court. In 1563, fearing a takeover of his throne by the Stur family, Eric accused them of treason and had multiple members of the family executed. He actually murdered one of the counts himself, before running off into the forest in a blind panic. He was found days later, confused and rambling, disguised as a peasant in a local village. He was eventually imprisoned, and his brother took the throne. Eric died by being poisoned in 1577. 
Maria Eleonora of Brandenburg was a German princess and the queen to the Swedish king Gustav II. She was known to be aggressively foul-mouthed, neurotic and extremely jealous surrounding her husband. After various failed attempts to provide a male heir, she eventually managed to give birth. However, to her disappointment, the baby was female and had an extremely large nose, as well as a condition called lanugo, in which a child is born with small black hairs all over its body. When the daughter was presented to her mother, the queen remarked, Instead of a son, I am given a daughter, dark and ugly, with a great nose and black eyes. Take her from me, I will not have such a monster. During the daughter's early days, the queen showed a complete lack of care and mysterious accidents began to occur. A beam fell from the ceiling onto the child's cradle. The young princess fell down the stairs supposedly by accident, and later a nurse was fired for supposedly dropping the young girl on a hard stone floor causing her lifelong shoulder damage. At the same time, the queen was reportedly in a state of hysteria and it was believed that she may have been behind the accidents. She was eventually banned from raising her own child and her daughter was sent away to live with the king's sister. After King Gustav passed away, Maria had his body embalmed and refused to bury him for more than a year. She also forced her daughter to live in seclusion in rooms that were completely blacked out and placed her late husband's heart in a golden casket that hung above her daughter's bed. Christian VII was the king of Denmark and Norway from 1766 to 1808. It is said that on the day he became king at the tender age of 16, he never acted a day older for the rest of his life. He was prone to fits of paranoia, hallucinations and bouts of violent anger, and it is said that in his worst episodes he would incoherently ramble in front of his advisors and bang his head against the walls of the palace until it bled. At one stage, he believed that he was an elf changeling rather than a human man. According to his doctors, his excessive self-pleasuring bordered on unhealthy, and he supposedly preferred patronising brothels than spending alone time with his wife. The Mad King loved public executions and had his own custom-made torture rack created. Once finished, he ordered his servants to tie him to the rack and asked them to flog him until he bled. Crown Prince Saido of Yosun, which was the last dynastic kingdom of Korea, was known to be a violent manic. It has been said that he may have killed more than a hundred people by his own hand. After having a brutal upbringing due to his father's harsh and overbearing nature, Prince Saido suffered from extreme bouts of anxiety. However, it was after the death of his sister, grandmother and stepmother that he began a descent into madness that he would never recover from. He killed and tortured his servants and assaulted multiple women in his chambers, as well as decapitating members of staff and making his wife watch. He had an intense fear of clothing, and in the words of his wife, for him to get dressed I had to have 10, 20 or 30 sets of clothes laid out. He would then burn some, supposedly on behalf of some ghost or other. Even after this, if he managed to get into a suit of clothes without incident, one had to count it as great good luck. After Saido attempted to kill an official's son, his father, King Geojong, ordered that he was placed in a rice box. The box was then tied with rope and covered with grass and placed in the scorching sun. Saido passed away eight days later. This king believed he was made of glass and would roam around his palaces howling like a wolf. Charles VI of France, known by his people as Charles the Mad, would first show his descent into madness during an expedition in the forest in 1392, when during an attack of paranoia, Charles set upon his escorts, wildly swinging his sword and killing a knight before falling into a coma-like state. His condition would continue to worsen over the next decade, and it has been documented that during certain episodes, he would forget he was king and could not remember his own name, and at times, he would not be able to recognise his wife or children. In later attacks, he roamed around his palaces howling like a wolf and refused to bathe for months on end. He also frequently suffered from the glass delusion, which is a mental disorder in which one believes they are made of glass or are extremely fragile. He reportedly had iron rods sewn into his clothes so that he would not shatter. Elagabalus was a Syrian-born teenage Roman emperor who served between 218 and 222 AD. He was rumoured to have regularly sacrificed children to the gods, as well as stripping women and chaining them to chariots like horses, before making them pull him around, as well as releasing poisonous snakes into the audience of gladiator games and watching as the crowds panicked. He was an odd dinner companion to say the least. His dinner parties would consist of getting his guests extremely drunk before trapping them in rooms of wild animals such as bears and lions, as well as reportedly tying his guests to water wheels and watching them slowly drown. He supposedly hired his government based on the size of the genitalia and had five wives including the widow of a man he executed, although his most favoured and passionate relationship was with a male chariot racer called Heracles. He was also known to dress up as a lady of the night and visit brothels, commanding punters to pay to sleep with him. However, a lot of these rumours need to be taken with a grain of salt, considering that he was despised by the Roman people. 